being offered on Craigslist Los Angeles. Crescent shaped Mercedes Benz, one of two regrets in my life. Please, they're $90,000 total. They suck. There's a pair of couches that are going really, really viral on YouTube right now. Yes, couches. Multiple creators have used these couches to collectively get well over 15 million views. If you make videos for YouTube, especially if you're a small YouTuber, there's something really interesting to learn from these couches. That's what today's video is all about. So if you're ready, buckle up, let's get right into it. So, Logan Paul, definitely one of the most controversial creators on this platform. Not the type I normally feature on this channel. But when I saw how different creators were passing these couches around, I thought it was actually pretty interesting. You see, it all started back in March when Logan Paul posted on his Instagram story that he really wanted to get rid of these couches he had bought. He said buying them was one of his two biggest regrets. Not just because they were $90,000, but because they were really uncomfortable. Nobody's gonna wanna buy these. As soon as you sit on them, you wanna automatically drop yourself into a pit of acid. He said he was desperate, put it on Craigslist for $20,000, and immediately Immediately, a lot of people started laughing at him. I remember reading the article back in March and going, why does he keep saying how bad these couches are? How in the world is he gonna sell them? Well, a little bit later, this YouTuber named Eric, spelled Eric, he decides he's going to actually buy Logan Paul's couches. High risk, high reward, you know what I mean? This dude's really on the come up right now. He started this year with 1,500 subscribers and now he has well over 300K. It's pretty insane. He made a whole thing out of buying these couches. Objectively, it didn't look like a great decision. It was quite ridiculous, but he sort of leaned into that. He embraced how ridiculous he was. Right now, he's sharing the whole adventure of him surprising Logan Paul and then trying really hard to resell these now infamous couches. A recurring thing throughout these adventures is how horrible, awful these couches Ooh, are. <laughs> oh. I would rather sit on a piece of dog shit than that. That's kind of the art though, right? It pushes back yeah, instead yeah, of- Yeah, it's like, you know, it kind of rejects you, so you want more. No one wants them, but that's sort of what's fun, funny about these episodes. How is Eric gonna get rid of these couches? And how are all of these creators who now have the couches going to use them for more content? Oh. Wait, is this supposed to tilt back or no? We're a little desensitized to this because we're so used to big creators doing this, but I want to stop and take a moment for all the small YouTubers to notice how these content creators are using the couches. These couches suck. They're undeniably uncomfortable, a waste of money. Logan Paul genuinely regrets buying them, considers them one of the worst decisions of his life. But he and all the other creators involved in these viral couches embrace that, actually made that weakness, that mistake, a character in their content. This not only made the content feel more real, authentic, but it also actually made it way more interesting. How are these creators going to work with these couches, navigate how horrible these couches are? This famous kombucha guy who literally has the perfect house to buy these couches and the money to waste and spend on these couches, even he didn't want the couches because they were that uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know if I'm into it, guys. Sorry, I know you brought it out here. That mini failure actually made the content better. A little bit later, this other huge YouTuber, FaZe Rug, decides he's gonna buy half the couches for a thousand dollars. Is he planning on sitting on them? No, he turns it into content. Makes a piece of content, buying and selling the couches, pranking his family with the couches. I paid 47,000, but I just rounded it to 45. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I got them for a thousand. And then surprising Logan Paul that now he has the couches. A thousand dollars. Bro, I got a steal. And then a week later, FaZe Rug holds a contest giving away the couches to whoever can stay on them the longest. Again, another almost 3 million views. On a different side of the internet, Eric takes the other half of the couches, challenges Jake Paul to a boxing match, boxes Jake Paul, gets completely destroyed by Jake Paul, surprises him with the gift of the couches that Jake Paul actually doesn't want. By this point, the couches are just basically endless entertainment. You don't even remember how bad these couches are, how it all started as Logan Paul's huge mistake. As a small YouTuber, it can feel like you can only succeed if you have a lot of money and a lot of personality. We have to be loud, funny, positive, confident. That's what people will subscribe for. When we think that that's what people are looking for on YouTube, we start editing out, filtering out the sides of us we don't like, that we're self-conscious about, that we're insecure about, our mistakes. When in reality, some of that stuff is actually what makes us special. Some of the things that we can use to our advantage to make our content more interesting. Eric, when he boxed Jake Paul to surprise him with the couches, he got completely destroyed. He got kicked to the ground, his face was bleeding. He didn't look strong at all. But but that weakness, he embraced it, he made it just part of his adventure, and it actually made the content way more fun and interesting. Today's my uh, 25th birthday. In Logan's birthday video, he said how much he hates his birthday because he's had such 
horrible, painful experiences with this birthday being on April 1st. Severe, sev and I'm even getting it now, like anxiety and PTSD just cause like of how fucked my birthdays have been. And I also just don't like the pressure put on gifts. This year on his 25th birthday, Logan Paul's best friend gives him a very disappointing birthday gift. Logan's friend's been hyping him up on the gift, excited to give him the gift. Bro, Mike is off. You might cry. Like these are like the kind of gifts that are gonna make you like well up a little <laughs> bit on your butt. And I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I don't really care about that shrimp. Here's the him why. It's not a really a mantis shrimp, dude. Logan's done so much for his friend, so he's expecting something good, but when the gift actually shows up, he genuinely is disappointed. That disappointment though, and this history of disappointing birthdays, Logan has fully embraced though. They call back to it all the time. And yes, it's also true that on my birthday, he got me a shrimp. The $6 shrimp. Do you know what it's like to, to get someone a gift and you're not sure if they're gonna like it or not? <laughs> that bad experience got flipped around to become a really funny, interesting, memorable character in their content. If you're having trouble talking to the camera, being confident, being funny, you feel like you don't look right, you feel like you don't have the right experience. What if there is a way to flip that around, embrace it, where it becomes one of the best parts of your content? What if you were able to reframe a bad thing, a scary thing, into something authentic, interesting, funny on your YouTube channel, something you actually become known for? So many of your favorite creators, they're super weird. Their quirks, their mistakes, their weakness is actually probably your favorite thing about them. You being an introvert or having a stutter, maybe looking a little different, what if you made that awesome, what would that look like? Becoming known for something bad or embarrassing doesn't need to be bad or embarrassing. It's all about how you see it, the story you tell. The top creators all understand this. They turn everything into content. They know with the right perspective, the right story, bad birthdays, bad knockdowns, bad couches can all become the best content ever. What are your couches? What would that be for you? If you think deep down only the loudest, craziest, funniest, most attractive creators can succeed on this platform, you're gonna notice a lot of that. I remember two years ago, I almost didn't start my YouTube channel because I thought, I'm normal, I'm boring, I'm too introverted, quiet. YouTube ended up being though, one of the best decisions of my life. And a lot of those quirks I was embarrassed about, being introverted, being in my head a lot, ended up becoming some of the most unique parts of this YouTube channel. There's a lot of creators on this platform, successful ones, that are like you. They look like you, they're weird like you. You just need to notice how they're telling their story differently. You have some couches you're embarrassed about, hiding. What if you change that? If you're a YouTube creator and want help rethinking your YouTube storytelling, this channel is exactly for you. I love this platform so much, seeing how other creators are pushing it forward. I'm super glad you're here. Subscribe, hit the bell, join the Facebook group if you want to expand on any of these topics, discuss more with other thoughtful creatives like you. You are the change maker of your own life. Let's think more deeply. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, peace, bye.